or Tuesday, November 2nd, uh, 2021. And before I call it to order, I'm going to ask our amazing city clerk, Clementine, to explain to people who aren't here and welcome everyone who is in our chambers, but those who are watching this on Zoom, how you can participate in our meeting. Certainly. So to begin with, some rules for those in person. The City of Monterey is committed to the safe attendance of its public meetings. Masks are required for all who attend in person, regardless of vaccination status, except those who are younger than two years old or have a medical condition that prevents wearing a mask. We ask that attendees in the council chamber keep their phones and devices muted to prevent audio interference and feedback with the hybrid meeting. And on Zoom, the City of Monterey seeks to continue to offer virtual methods for public participation in meetings. If you aren't joining us in person today, there are two ways to virtually participate. You may join the meeting directly on Zoom Gov using the Zoom app on your computer or mobile device, and you can also call into the Zoom meeting. To join the meeting on Zoom on your computer, smartphone, or telephone, use the link or phone number on the agenda at iSearchMonterey.org. Since the meeting has started, you'll find the agenda under the recent tab. To call in by telephone, dial toll free 833-568-8864, then enter meeting ID 160-772-9333 pound. And if prompted to enter a participant ID, press pound. Detailed instructions on using Zoom are available at monterey.org slash public meetings. To make a public comment using the Zoom app, you can virtually raise your hand by pressing the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. If you dialed in by phone, raise your hand by dialing star nine and then unmute yourself when called upon by dialing star six. You must do both. Public commenters will be muted until it's their turn to speak. I will call on each public speaker in the order of their hands raised. Please stay within the time limit that will be established for today's meeting, which we will show using the countdown timer on the screen. If you're connected live on Zoom, the timer is accurate with no delay. Today's meeting is also streamed live on the city's YouTube account, which is accessible at youtube.com slash city of Monterey with approximately 10 second delay and on Comcast channel 25 up to 90 seconds delay. As always, we look forward to receiving your public comment. Oh, good. Well, thank you, Clementine. And that does sound like a rather complicated instructions. And it's simply an announcement because anyone who wants to participate in our meetings, all they have to do is go to our city council agenda and all of that is explained. So it's really quite easy to participate by Zoom. Uh, but if you just uh, turned us in for the first time, we'll make sure that you can join us. So we'll call the meeting to order. And I think we're all here. Uh, is Council Member Williamson here? Uh, I see, I see you. Uh, he is connected to the meeting. I just heard him pipe up for a moment. All right, so maybe we're having- I'm, I'm here, Mayor. Okay, good, all right. Well, the, well, the record show that everyone is here. And um, Clementine, again, will be putting on the screen for those who are not here in person, the flag, and as soon as you do that, I'm gonna invite everyone to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. It's always a pleasure for our city to recognize Defense Language Institute Quarterly Joint Service Awards. And we welcome you and thank you for being here along with your support staff. Uh, as I think everyone knows that the city of Monterey is the language capital of the world that's actually registered. And that's because of our Defense Language Institute, Naval Postgraduate School, Middlebury Institute, all the support language, uh, private language companies, our K-12 schools, all of which are teaching languages and our community colleges, and of course, CSUMB. So it's really a very international. You see uh, Santa Cruz as well. And approximately 3,600 students yearly 
go through the Defense Language Institute to serve our country in sensitive national security positions. It's, uh, I've been around a little bit. I was elected 40 years ago. I and mean, I haven't been on the council all the time. I take breaks. Could be ones coming up, no announcements. And anyway, in the past, <laughs> the predominant languages were Vietnamese, Russian, Korean, and Arabic. A large, large Vietnamese component because obviously because of the Vietnam War. And now there are 17 languages, including several dialects of Arabic, 36 week long courses in French, Spanish, and Indonesian, 48 week courses in Hebrew, Persian, Farsi, Russian, Tagalog, and Urdu. Urdu wasn't taught obviously in the past. Then a 64 week course, Modern Standard Arabic, Egyptian Arabic, Iraqi Arabic, Levantine Arabic, and Sudanese Arabic, Chinese Mandarin, Japanese, Korean, and Pashto. And again, Pashto and Urdu were not languages that were taught historically because those are Pakistani and uh, Afghan Iraqi languages. There's an 1800 member teaching staff and support staff who are here as well. Um, and there are 95% native speakers. So there are about 50,000 trained linguists who came from the Defense Language Institute deployed throughout the world. Whenever uh, we have an opportunity to, to have them come greet us and talk to us, I am always so impressed. It gives me hope for the future because I know we're in good hands. And I mean that sincerely. I can remember one day outside in this, uh, pre-COVID outside in our patio, there was a group of people and they were talking a variety of languages. And I thought, well, that's interesting. It must be a tour bus. Maybe they picked them up at the airport and so on. So I went over and said, uh, well, nice to see you. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying our, our grounds. Uh, where are you from? Indiana, North Carolina, Massachusetts. They were Defense Language Institute students. <laughs> And I thought that was so impressive. We always, of course, appreciate the support staff that's here, the families with you or at home, which enabled you to be here and they share you with us and we thank you so much. Now we do have three recipients this evening and what I'd like to do is read the proclamation and then I'll read the three names at the proclamations do have the same verbiage. And then if you would like, we, I would certainly welcome you to come up and receive the proclamation. If you want to say a few words to us and our, our vast TV audience, we certainly will give you the opportunity to do that as well. Whereas the Defense Language Institute Foreign Language Center was, has established a quarterly joint service non-commissioned officer, petty officer and junior enlisted board, Glasses are fogging up. Whereas as a recipient of the board award, our honorees have been demonstrated extraordinarily personal abilities, leadership skills, and knowledge of the history of the Presidium and the DLI, chain of command, world events, customs and courtesies, first aid, code of conduct, uniform code of military justice, military leadership, and the armed forces insignia. I always enjoy reading that particular paragraph because it's just more than going and taking a language. It's to the leadership skills and also to understand the customs and the culture. Because many people will be going to places where you do need to understand how people think and work. So it's really a pleasure for me to say that the Monterey community is proud of the country's service members, as well as the relationship that we do have with the Defense Language Institute and all of our military friends. I'm wearing a challenge coin that was given to me by Colonel Ford, the previous garrison commander. He gave me permission to drill holes in it so I can make a, a bolo tie out of it. <laughs> and our chief of police, Chief David, you think you were the first one I drilled holes in, in your uh, challenge coin. Could be, so I thank you for that. So I'd like to proclaim that as the mayor on behalf of our city council and our citizens, hereby recognize Sergeant Joan Lee, United States Marine Corps for a job well done. 
and we thank you for your continuing contributions to the armed services and to our nation, as well as Technical Sergeant Sean Wheeler, United States Air Force. Airman First Class, Grace Branch, United States Air Force. So again, we're so happy that you're here. I'd be my honor to present this to you if you wanna take a photo op. And then again, uh, if you wanna uh, have an opportunity to speak to us, we would really appreciate it. So if um, we can start with Sergeant Joan Lee. Oh, please just come right up here. Or, you know, let me come down here. <laughs> Clyde, could you stand right there by the microphone so we could hear uh, our recipient a little better, maybe closer to the microphone at the podium? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, buenos tardes, damas y caballeros. Soy Grace Brandt de la Fuerza Aérea. Soy Aerotecnica Primera Clase en la Fuerza Aérea y soy de Minnesota. Como ahí que un caballero es de Minnesota también. Uh, uh, soy en mi tercer semestre de mis estudios y me encanta mi idioma. Es un idioma bellísimo y estoy muy agradecida que que puedo um, aprender este idioma y estoy muy emocionada de usar mi idioma en el futuro con mi trabajo. Muchas gracias. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Anna Rakib Saeed Ibn Jahad, wa Edr Sualog al Arabia Hunna, Fimon Tre, Ashkrokum, Li Fursa, Li Haduri Hunna, Fi Montre, Li Marat Ukra, wa Kuntu Edr Sualog al Pashto, Fi Senet Al Fain, wa Ethna Asher, wa Ashkrokum, Anna Bazaujati, wa Bente, Lakuma. Um, just thank you very much. As some of you might have been able to tell, I am studying modern standard Arabic here. I'm here for the second time, uh, and I really want to take this this moment to just thank you for the opportunity. Um, I spoke Pashto uh, about 10 years ago, learned it here in Monterey. I love the city. I love the area. It's where I met my wife, uh, and it's where we decided to start our family uh, all those years ago. So, so thank you very, very much. Well, that's so meaningful. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. All right, that concludes.
the chat part and then show you. Um, with all the studying and the, the all of the attributes that we've done in order to get the award, I wouldn't be able to try to see that other thing to do. But you're welcome to stay for our conversation. Find out, I don't think anybody will know. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Alan, Minnesota, what, what is your mascot? The Vikings. The Vikings. What, the football team, the Vikings and everything? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Wisconsin's are the cheese heads, right? Is that, or is that derogatory? <laughs> we have friends who say I think yeah. they embrace it. <laughs> I think so. Mm -hmm. You got to have the triangle cheese hat when you go to the football game. <laughs> All right, that was just always so meaningful. So let's go ahead to public comments, anything not on the agenda. And before we adjourn our meeting to closed session, we'll give people an opportunity at that time to speak to the closed session if they wish to. But public comments uh, right now are things that are not on the agenda, hopefully within the jurisdiction of the city of Monterey. And we can promise you a staff response if that is needed and be sure to leave your contact with us. So with that, we'll open it up to anyone here in the council chambers who'd like to share some thoughts with us. Welcome. Yes, sir. Good to see you guys again. Yes. Uh, everybody's well. Hello, council members. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Robbie Therese with uh, Robbie's Ocean Fresh Seafood. I just got a little uh, kind of irritated here the last couple of weeks. My vehicles that I park in the city parking lot, Robbie's Ocean Fresh vans have been getting vandalized. Uh -oh. um, this is the fifth time something's happened. I've had graffiti on them. I've had mm. broken windshields, broken windshield wipers, uh, cattle converters stolen off my vehicles. And the last two times now, they've cut the gas lines on all my vans and siphoned all my gas out of my vehicle. Wow. And it happened, I got the police reports on all the incidents. And I did speak to my attorney, Andy Schwartz, and apparently the city is exempt for anything that happens in the parking lots, which I just didn't really uh, understand or accept, basically, because I'm paying oh, probably a little over $3,000 in permits for all my vehicles to park in the city lot. And I'm just kind of would like an explanation, I guess, maybe to see or ask why the city is not responsible for somebody that's paying to park in their lot, but not being protected. Um, along with that there, there is no cameras on that, in the depot lot on either east side or west side, I guess it is, or north and yeah, east and west. Uh, there's no cameras. Uh, there's no signage of anything. I've video, pardon me. I videotaped it with my telephone as far as uh, you know, park at own risk, not responsible for stolen property. No signs throughout the whole parking lot anywhere in Monterey or in the wharf area. Pardon mm -hmm. me. Uh, I do park at the end of the wharf uh, during my work hours with the red permit, which allows me to park up toward my fish market. Uh, the other ones we park at night in the front parking lot, which is the green permit, which I buy for the whole year. And, you know, I just was to the city if they can take a little more uh, caution, maybe, because I know the police officer said there's new cameras up on top of the stoplights now for traffic reasons. But those are just timed. Mm -hmm. um, they're not you can't go back and rewind it and see what happened there. Right. Uh, so I would just like to put out to uh, Mr. Hines, uh, Hans, pardon me into the city council, if they can maybe, if there's a budget for something like that, to maybe consider putting cameras. I know there's one when I used to have the work marketplace, we had cameras all around our building. Now there's only one on that building and it only focuses on that parking permit where you get a ticket. And lighting, if there could be some kind of lights. Mm -hmm. I know they might do it again, I'm sure, but maybe a little deterrent, if they see bright lights, it might keep the thieves from coming into the parking lot. So that's all. Okay, Rob. But a notion out there, maybe even I say any cameras or something, or just bright fluorescent lighting on that part. And I park up in front of Dalmani, which just for the purpose of to be seen. But they got some galls to go underneath the vehicles and do what they do. So, and it's costing me like three hundred and sixty-five bucks per vehicle every time it happens to fix the gas line and fill the vans back up again. Sure. So it's getting costly. Yeah. So I would maybe if they can 
check it out. I would really greatly appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, Robbie, that you have to experience that. Yeah. It's just what's wrong with this world, right? Yeah, and they do. They took my Cali converter at night, but my neighbor, the guy next to me, he works for the city. I think they took his at four thirty in the afternoon. Yeah, they saw a lot of the guy called me and said, "There's a guy stealing the Cali right. converter here." Happened to my daughter's family too. Okay, it's terrible. We'll Thank work. Thank you very much. We'll work with you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else uh, here? Uh, no, then do we have anyone uh, who wants to participate through our online? We do have one person with a hand raised on our meeting, um, Mayor. Um, and let's see, this is a phone caller with the last three digits, 705. Please go ahead. You may need to dial star six to unmute. Go ahead. Hello. Caller with the last three digits, 705. Well, we have another person in the meantime. Um, how about the caller with the last three digits, 151. Please dial. Okay, go ahead, please. Hi, yes, this is Tammy Jennings. I haven't heard anything else about the meeting because I've been trying to get on to the meeting. Um, I have had problems getting on to just about every Zoom meeting I have been trying for the last two months to get on. I don't know what's going on. I sent screenshots to your city clerk. Hopefully things can get better because I really do want to attend. I want to be able to see the meeting and I can't and it's very frustrating. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we yeah. heard you. Thank you for sending the screenshots. I do have them and I'll be sharing them with staff to see if we can get it sorted out. Um, meanwhile, thank you for calling in and I hope you can watch it on YouTube. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thank Bye. And uh, let's see, Mayor, I'm going to try one more time with um, 705. Caller with the last three digits, 705. Hello. Hello. Can you, can you yes. hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Good evening, Mayor Robertson and City Council members. I am Lorna Moffat. I want to point the fishing industry in our area to a new direction, one which will be much needed in the coming years and is needed now. Utilize fishermen to protect and track and keep count of our fisheries. Did you know that 70% of all fishing stocks are crashing? The bluefin tuna is on the endangered species list. Sustainable fishing, it's a name we give so we can feel good about eating some fish species that are still more common than others. But between overfishing, illegal fishing, and global warming, we are losing our fish stocks worldwide, and we will need an enormous policing effort to make sure we can preserve our fish species as people become more desperate for food and do not want to go vegan. I spoke with a Persane fisherman recently. I asked if he would be willing to turn his ship into a policing vessel for our Monterey sanctuary. Surprisingly, he said he would. Basically, he would need a million dollars a year. That's his gross for his yearly 500 ton catch now. As more illegal fishing takes place and more foreign vessels seek sanctuaries like our own, the more we will need policing of our precious fish stocks. The Department of Fish and Wildlife has five boats between San Francisco and Cambria, and they only go out once or twice a week, I am told. The amount of fishing vessels that were in the bay this last spring are unsustainable. I recently found out that the city of Monterey gets $15,000 plus a year for their 2017 purchasing of fishing rights. This coincides with the growing number of fishing vessels in our bay, fishing vessels with enormous nets. What happened to our incentive to have a sanctuary? And how can we trust government agencies who are beholden to business over starving whales? A report released by NOAA's Southwest Fisheries Science Center stated that gray whales have declined by at least 23.7% since 2016. And experts say it has been associated with increasing amount of emaciated and malnourished whales. 
Research at the University of British Columbia have collected data that is often omitted from reports by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. They find that global catches between 1950 and 2010 have been reconstructed, meaning that fish stocks have been reported up to 50% higher than data reported to the FAO indicated. What can we do? Curb your fish intake. I've contacted Congressman Panetta to look into giving fishermen a new livelihood, and I'm waiting for a reply. Thank you. Thank you, Lorna. Uh, yes. And that was the last one with the hand raised, Mayor Robertson. All right, thank you. We'll close that public comment section of our agenda, go to consent. Uh, earlier, we didn't have any public who wanted to pull anything from the consent, is my understanding that? Correct. And was there anyone in the audience who wanted to speak to the consent agenda? No? Council members' questions or anything you wanted to pull? I'll move to approve. Second. Okay. I would just have a real uh, quick comment on number th three. Here we go. This is an ordinance on regulating solid waste disposal and recycling services for residential and commercial premises in order to comply with the state law to implement mandatory organic waste disposal reduction requirements. It's been in the news a little bit. Uh, and I think that as going forward, we're probably going to be seeing more and more of this particular ordinances. How do you implement something? Uh, the, the number of uh, caveats, there's a hundred items in here describing what everyone is required to do. And I think the idea is, is good, what we're trying to accomplish here, but it's gonna take a lot of teamwork and understanding and education in order to implement this, this law and this ordinance. So it's, uh, it's, we'll look at it as an opportunity <laughs> and maybe uh, uh, areas where we can also have more employees, people working in this particular area because it's going to be very challenging, I think. But we'll, we'll get her done. So, roll call. Councilmember Williamson. Yes. Councilmember Hoffa. Yes. Councilmember Smith. Yes. Councilmember Albert. Yes. And Mayor Roberson. Yes. So that passes 5 0. So then we'll go ahead to our public hearing. We have a consideration of 580 Kaye Principal for an application for the Mills Act contract and to rezone H1 historic landmark. And this is, um, has been through the Historic Preservation Commission, but I think it's a state law that it requires a hearing in front of the city council. But you know, that's good because we have a chance to learn some really interesting history about buildings. And when I looked this one up, I said, oh, I know where that is. I've seen that, I mean, hundreds of thousands of times. It's really exciting to have that in front of us. So I, I think our awesome community development director, uh, Mr. City Manager, is going to make that presentation. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, actually, the report is, 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 I think, was covered by Christy uh, Sabdo, but she is uh, out on a well-deserved vacation, I believe. So Kim uh, will take over for uh, for her and will present the report. Good. Um, thank you. Kim, Kim, could you please turn on your microphone? Yes, 580 Cali Principal is proposed for historic designation in a Mills Act contract. Um, this is the subject property. It's right across from City Hall. Um, there was an intensive historic survey prepared. The Miller Adobe was constructed in 1874 and is believed it's the last Adobe constructed in Monterey. It qualifies for both the National and California Register as being associated with early uh, American Monterey history. And I'll just pass that. I just wanted to show you a photograph. This is the front of the building that basically remains unchanged from 1874. Uh -huh. Um, the side of the building and the back of the building. I did want to just share with you the back of the building because the Historic Commission approved a permit to replace these windows. This was actually an improvement. Um, 
and this is just a detail of the windows that will be replaced that were installed in the 1980s. Mm. Um, and this is how the building, the back of the building looked in 1980 and then the change. So the, the replacement of windows that you'll see um, will not be damaging original historic material that is needed because the um, windows are leaking. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, the property qualifies for designation and the Historic Commission recommended approval of the rehabilitation permit. And so our recommendation this evening is for you to rezone the property from planned community downtown to planned community downtown H1 and approve a resolution with the Mills Act contract. If you have Good. any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Do we have any questions from the council? Um, yeah, Mr. Mayor, I have one, one quick question. Council Member Ed. I, I think that there's been a change. Uh, frequently, there was a law firm that was there. I think they've um, since retired, but what's the, what's the use of the building now? And what's the plan for the use of the building in the future? Do we know? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I know it was acquired by a new entity. I believe it's currently being used for office space, um, but I'm not positive. Okay, thank you. It's a beautiful building. Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Council Member Dan, please. Uh, first, I'm I'm really surprised that it it, it hasn't been under the Mill Act, the Mills Act, to be honest with you. I mean, that building has been there for obviously for many years. My question is the 80s renovation. Um, was that um, was that an add-on? I, I didn't quite get that. Was that an add-on to the current building? So the the front of the building basically is unchanged from the 1874. Uh -huh. And what we saw at the back of the building and documented, they added on to the building over time between 1874 and 1980. And so it was sort of a hodgepodge of additions. So in 1980, they um, cleaned up the facade. And I can show you the photograph again if you'd like to see what it looked like. Okay. But it's um, a hodgepodge of additions that were removed. And um, so the facade we have now is, is a new facade from the 1980s. Well, it seems like they did a, a pretty good job of holding the integrity of the, of the building itself. So I was just wondering if that was a complete add-on or not. Thank you. All right, is there any public comment? Yeah, here. All right, seeing none. And is there any online public comment? Nobody. All right, then I'll entertain a motion. I'll uh, make a motion to approve staff's recommendation for the second. subject property. All right, we second. Have a and a second. Roll call, please. Council Member Hoffa? Yes. Council Member Albert? Yes. Council Member Smith? Yes. Council Member Williamson? Yes. And Mayor Roberson? Yes. Okay, that passes 5-0. All right, uh, we'll go to council comments. I'm just going to pass because I know we're going to have a very long uh, closed session. But if uh, other council members have something they want to share, this is your opportunity. Council member Dan? No, I'll, I'll pass. I don't have anything to say. Okay, anyone? Council member Ed? Uh, I'll pass and uh, say hello to everybody and uh, look forward to the work we've got in front of us tonight. Right. Council member Allen? Um, nothing to report at this time. Thank you. And council member Tyler? None here either, Mayor, thank you. Okay, good. I know we, we have a lot of outside activities that we normally have an opportunity to share, but as I said, closed session could be quite long. And city manager reports? Yes, very briefly, uh, the Presidio Museum has reopened last weekend. Um, it's um, again, one of those things that, that was closed for, uh, uh, for many months and we're happy that it's open again for the public to visit and enjoy. Thank you. Before we adjourn to closed session, was there anyone in the audience who wanted to talk about any of the closed session items? Or anyone online who wanted to have comments about uh, our closed session items? No hands are raised, Mayor Robertson. All right, in that case, unless I left out anything, we're going to adjourn to a closed session. Thanks, everybody. Okay.